Are you brave enough to ask for what you need when you feel vulnerable? When are we at our most vulnerable? Is it when we feel intimidated, when we're scared, when we're sick or in pain? What about feeling all of those all at once? Have you ever visited a hospital emergency room because you were sick or in pain or have been with a friend or family member who was? Have you seen your doctor and found that your blood pressure was higher than normal? There's even a name for that. It's called white coat hypertension. Every year, the average American will see their doctor four times. 42% of you will end up in the emergency room annually. And when you do, when you most feel the need for safety, empathy, comfort, and communication, the majority of you report that you don't receive those things. A recent study conducted by NORC at the University of Chicago found that overall satisfaction with the American healthcare system is remarkably low, with fewer than half of you reporting that they felt satisfied with how healthcare is delivered. Our healthcare system needs healing. Twelve years ago, I started treating patients who suffer from a severe and strange condition called complex regional pain syndrome. It is usually the result of an injury, like a fracture or a surgery, resulting in the central nervous system to go haywire. This causes unimaginable daily pain, reported by patients as higher than natural childbirth on the McGill pain scale. It often spreads to other body parts. And to further complicate matters, it is also invisible, meaning that if a doctor looks at these patients or at their diagnostic tests, they can often not tell that these patients are sick. And yet, they report feeling like they are being burnt alive. I listen to those patients and they taught me something incredibly valuable. Healing starts the second you walk through a clinic or a hospital's doors. As a result, I've made big changes to my clinic. We changed our waiting rooms into living rooms. We brought in emotional support pets. We started approaching the patients with a whole body philosophy. Because you guys are more than a collection of organs. You are whole human beings with fears, emotions, and expectations. I am not here to discuss different healing philosophies or the way we diagnose or treat diseases. I am here to share a simple truth with you. Often, the smallest moment of empathy can launch a person's healthcare journey. I think that because medicine has become so focused on speed, efficiency, and privacy, we have lost the very heart of what healthcare should be all about. A human connection, feeling hurt, so often a patient will sit down with me in our first consultation and just cry because for the first time they feel like they are simply being listened to. I am not proposing that my system will work for healthcare as a whole. We cannot bring in packs of emotional support groups and most probably cannot change hospital waiting rooms to living rooms. What I am saying is that small moments of empathy can make big, beautiful waves. Small, powerful moments. A recent survey conducted found that what you guys need from your healthcare teams should be relatively simple to provide. You need to be spoken to in a language that you understand. You need to feel empathy. 
You don't want to feel dehumanized. My mother recently had to undergo outpatient surgery for an abdominal hernia, and she was so scared. One moment that day changed her entire experience. Her surgeon asked her if there was anything he could do to make her feel more comfortable, and she asked him if he would pray with her. She told me that as long as she lived, she would never forget that seemingly small moment of human kindness that her doctor showed her that day. Dr. Fabrizio Benedetti is a professor of neuroscience and physiology, and he has extensively studied the effect of the placebo. Most of you know what a placebo is. It's essentially a fake drug or treatment given to the patient while the patient believes that it is real. Through the years, we have come to believe in the power of the placebo because it just shows how powerful the mind is. If the patient believes that the drug or treatment is going to be good for them, it has a positive effect on their treatment. Dr. Benedetti's team studied a group of patients that underwent thoracic surgery. By nature, that is an incredibly painful surgery. And so those patients are given morphine sulfate to help with the pain as they wake up from anesthesia. Half the group received the drug through a pre-programmed pain pump, and the other half was administered the drug by a doctor standing next to their bedside. The last group reported significantly lower pain levels. We have come to believe in the power of the placebo because it shows how much our minds can affect our healing outcomes. No SIBO is less known. It means the opposite of placebo. It is a detrimental effect produced by psychosomatic or psychological factors, such as uh, thinking that the drug or treatment you're getting is not going to be good for you. No SIBO, fear and doubt. The first step of every healing journey is therefore hope. But hope cannot be fostered if the very person you trust to be the steward of your healthcare journey is a remote stranger. We are so intimidated by doctors. We see them as here and we are here. But the truth is they are partners with you. You are partnering in your healing journey. And more than partners, they are there to serve you. They work for you. See the need for change. You demand good service from every other service industry. Let's restore healthcare to its proper place, a place of service. Together, we can change healthcare, but you have to be brave enough to ask. Ask for empathy. Ask for your doctor or nurse to hold your hand. Ask them to simply speak to you in a language that you understand. You need to heal healthcare for yourself and for your children. My favorite quote is by B.J. Palmer. It says, you never know how something you think, say, or do today will change the lives of millions tomorrow. Thank you.